In chapter three, we're going to talk a lot about finding properties based on what we know about the situation that we're currently in. And really what this is called is fixing the state. And again, a state is a collection of properties. The pictures you see here are basically what we, like a, what they call a PVT surface, pressure, volume, temperature, and how things are related um, uh, between pressure, volume, and temperature. And these are all found empirically, experimentally, uh, that relate pressure, volume, and temperature as shown here. So it's an actual three-dimensional plot shown here. A lot of times we're just going to look at 2D plots uh, such as temperature versus volume. But you see, depending on which you know properties you have, you can relate to a different uh, property, be it pressure, volume, or temperature. Okay. Now, a few definitions we have to talk about. The first is saturation. This would be the start and end of a phase change. The most common phase change that we're going to look at is going from a liquid phase to a vapor phase. So saturation is basically the start of coming to a boil, essentially, and then at the end of the boil when everything's a vapor. So saturated liquid is right when it starts. Saturated vapor is right when it ends. Okay. Then we have something called a vapor dome, which you see here in kind of the shaded region here. And what that vapor dome is, is it's a, it's a region of a two-phase liquid vapor state, meaning I'm, I have some vapor, I have some liquid, I'm in between that process of going from a liquid to a vapor. We're going to talk in more detail about this in a little bit. But that's the vapor dome, is that region where I've got a little vapor and a little liquid at the same time. Uh, we have something called a critical point, which we'll discuss a, a little bit later in the chapter, but I wanted to find it here, which is uh, basically the top of that vapor dome, right? So at the critical point, essentially, there is no, it goes immediately from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. There's no like boiling off. Um, so it just kind of goes from one state to the next state immediately. There's no uh, point in between. Now, Fixing the state. Essentially, if I know any two properties of the state, I can find any other property of the state. So if I know volume and pressure, I immediately know temperature. Now, there's one exception, and that's under the vapor dome. Pressure and temperature are not independent of one another. So if I know I'm under that vapor dome and I know the pressure, I automatically know the temperature, right? Because they're completely dependent on one another. But other than that, if I know any two properties either outside the vapor dome or any two properties other than pressure and temperature under the vapor dome, I can fix all other states, all of other properties of that state. Okay, so let's look a little bit more at what's going on. So we're going to take this example of a constant pressure heat addition. So if you look at the picture here, right, I've got a piston cylinder, I've got all liquid water. I'm going to heat that up until it all boils off and turns into vapor. And I'm going to do that over a constant pressure. So if you think about like boiling water on a stove, except that I'm trapping that water vapor in there, but it's going to be under constant pressure. Okay. Um, and this idea is also shown over here on the two-dimensional temperature versus volume plot I have here, basically following a line across the bottom here, this LFGS. Okay. So um, Going from basically state L up to state F, this is when it's what we call a subcool liquid, right? Where I just have water and I'm heating it up and the temperature is increasing. The volume increases ever so slightly up to what we call saturated uh, liquid, okay? So it's just, you know, this is basically bringing that liquid up to a boil, okay? At this point, we once it starts boiling, we go into the saturation under that vapor dome. Okay, where I go, basically I'm turning from a saturated liquid, where everything's a liquid, boiling it off to a saturated vapor to the point, you know, right as uh, it all turns into a vapor. And what happens here is I have a huge increase in volume going from liquid to vapor. However, my temperature doesn't change. And you know this because if you've ever boiled water, no matter how long you boil that water, as long as it's still boiling, I'm at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so... The temperature doesn't change, just a huge increase in volume. So pressure and temperature remain constant, and only the volume changes. Now, we have something called the quality, which by definition is the mass of the vapor divided by the total mass of the substance. So 
this only occurs, you know, in this saturation, this quality. So basically, how much of this um, liquid vapor stage is vapor? Okay, so it's like a percentage. So if zero percent is vapor, then we have saturated liquid. It's all liquid. If a hundred percent of is vapor, that's a saturated vapor. So all of the um, mass is in the form of vapor. So again, I slowly go from saturated liquid or zero percent quality, which is zero vapor, all the way up to 100% vapor or saturated vapor. And this is when basically the last little drop of liquid is boiled off into vapor. And then I move into what I call superheated vapor, where the, the gas continues to expand, okay? And now temperature and pressure are no longer dependent on, they're both now independent of one another. So I move back into that. If hey, I know any two, then I can find anything else, okay? So that's kind of uh, what we're looking at with this uh, idea, the vapor dome above, below, and in the middle of it. Okay, so how do I relate these properties? How do I find them? I don't really have equations. What I have instead is a whole bunch of tables, and these are what are in the back of the book. Okay, so tables A2 through A18, um, I have both metric and uh, English tables. So you can go in the back and use these tables. Okay, so first talk a little bit about superheated vapor tables. Okay. Now remember, when it's a vapor, any two properties work, right? Everything's independent of one another. So if I find two of them, I can find all the other ones. Okay. So, but it's a table, right? I don't have equations, so I just have these discrete points. Okay. So the, the question becomes, okay, what happens if I my value is not in the table? Well, I have to do something called linear interpolation. That is, I go, I use the closest data points on either side of my point and assume a straight line and figure out what's going on. So I have a little example here, and this is in the book as well. Okay, So let's say I want to find the volume at 215 degrees Celsius, but I look at my table and I have 200 degrees and 240 degrees. Question then becomes, okay, well, what is the volume at 250? So again, we're assuming this linear interpolation, which is essentially, hey, let's let's figure out the slope. So I find the slope of the the line, or you can think about it as similar triangles, either way. So I basically have the change in temperature uh, divided by the uh, change in volume, okay, of what's in my table. And then I use, okay, well, now let's say, what is it at 215, where I do the change in temperature to 215 to some unknown volume relative to the bottom. So it's basically this... Um, similar triangle idea that I have here. Now I can rearrange it and get an equation for my volume as shown, and I can find for this example that the volume is 0.2141 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, so you can either set up your equivalent slopes, or if you want to remember this equation where you find the, you know, the uh, set the temperature. Uh, there's, there's many ways of thinking about it, but the idea is again, we just, uh, we fit a straight line between two points and then figure out, okay, where on that line I am and figure out uh, the volume from that. This is called linear interpolation. You will need to know how to do this. We will do this hundreds of times, uh, maybe even thousands of times before the end of the semester. Okay. Now, we also have saturation tables. Again, this is under the vapor dome where pressure and temperature are completely dependent on one another, meaning if I know my pressure, I immediately know my temperature. Okay. They're not independent. Okay. So again, I need that quality in order to figure out, say, I'm at uh, you know, a quality of 75%. What that essentially means is I'm 75% of the way between saturated liquid and saturated vapor. So I can figure out my volume knowing my saturated liquid and saturated vapor volume that is at a quality of 0% and 100%. And then knowing my actual quality, which in the case I just gave was 75%, I can find my um, you know, the volume that I'm currently at given that quality. So using the quality, okay, I can figure out exactly where I am under this vapor dome based on a percentage of mass vapor that I have. 